I want to ask us this question. In particular, I want to ask people who do not think that we should have gun control. And I, and I would like to ask the question actually to Americans across the country who are against gun control, whether they're members of the NRA or not. The NRA actually only represents a very small number of gun owners, by the way. Just imagine that black Americans or Muslim Americans or Mexican Americans started mobilizing around guns to say, hey, we need to start to defend ourselves. And so since we can own guns, in many states, you know, we can have concealed weapons and we can apply for concealed weapons and it's all good and we can buy assault rifles, that there was a movement in the United States by, I don't know, Black Lives Matter activists or Brown Lives Matter, Matter activists or, or, you know, representatives of, of Mexican immigrants or the um, Muslim American organizations. So Muslims around the United States started saying, hey, listen, those of us who are American citizens, we really need to think about protecting ourselves. And so what we'd like to do, we're starting an organization so that every Muslim family has an assault, or at least one assault rifle, but preferably two or three in their homes with lots of ammunition. Make sure you have a lot of ammunition because we need to make sure we protect ourselves. And so the question I have is, what would happen? And again, an honest assessment of ourselves, an honest assessment of this issue. What would happen in the United States? And then imagine seeing, you know, in an open carry state, 20 or 30 or 50 or 100 black men walking down the street with their assault rifles strapped around their shoulders. What would happen? What would we feel? How would that work out? Who would be pushing for gun control? What would they be saying? What would the NRA say? What kind of commercials would the NRA put out in support of black Americans who are pushing to own assault rifles? This movement, every black household should own at least two assault rifles. Every Muslim household should own at least two assault rifles. Mexican immigrants, you should have three of them. What would the NRA say about that? Because it's their right. I think I know what a lot of people would say. I think I have the idea, I live with the idea that a lot of people would start to shift their focus a little bit on gun control, at least a little bit. Some people, the purists, would be like, rock on, more members, more support, more people, more guns, more whatever. This is really important, this is great. But I I don't know how many. We've had a few examples in the United States a few, there's more than a few, but considerably less than white people, of black and brown people going on a shooting rampage with assault rifles. But mostly it's white people. That may just be because it's mostly white people that own them. But, I don't know. At least up till now, it seems to me that if you see a black man or a brown man or woman with an assault rifle, probably the data would tell you you should be less afraid than if you see a white man with an assault rifle or a white woman. That's what the data would tell you. But my gut feeling says that most people wouldn't be. And these are the kinds of questions that we have to ask ourselves, right? You can talk about it in your discussion group. I'm not going to open it up because I, I'm just provo- my job today is just to provoke us with some questions for thought. So, I don't know. So here, let me just give you one quick thing. Um, these are the Black Panthers on the steps of the, capital, the state capitol in California back in 1967. And the Black Panthers was an organization that emerged in the black community because, the white, because of police violence, police repression, and because the government across the board in post-civil rights in the United States was absolutely unwilling, and it's pretty clear, all you got to do is go back and study, was really unwilling to grant equal rights to black people across the board. And the Black Panthers was an organization that moved from the, started from the bottom up 
educating, feeding, providing social services in, black, in poor black communities where services were needed and where governments were not providing them. So it emerged as a really cool organization. They also had a wing of the Black Panthers who said, hey, we can take advantage of open carry. And we also need to protect ourselves because the police aren't really protecting us. In fact, they're going after us. And so we'll take advantage of this. So this is a bunch of men on the steps of the Capitol building in California. Go to the next slide. Here they are again. How about, how, imagine walking up to the steps of the Capitol building and seeing these two gentlemen. That dude right there with his... And so this guy is reading the proclamation to them that says, yes, you are correct. According to the laws of the state of California, you are legally allowed to openly carry these guns on the steps of the Capitol building. Shortly thereafter, the state of California, under Ronald Reagan, by the way, future president of the United States, passed some of the most st the strictest gun laws in the U.S., and most every observer at a fundamental level says even though the gun laws apply to everybody, they emerged because of these guys and others like them right here. That's just one tiny example in history, but I don't think I have to go back in history to look around and imagine what might happen today. Violent crime in the U.S. is at a 30-year low. 70% of Americans think that crime is rising. It's not surprising, right? Um, this is one of these things where you have to really have an honest and open assessment of things and not let our emotions sort of get us carried away. Uh, next slide. Um, let me show you this. Watching TV distorts our reality. It's no wonder that people think we're a much more violent society than we are. You really not likely, nobody's likely to be the victim of a violent crime and certainly if you don't live in a neighborhood with a good deal of violence. Here's top crimes on television, and here's top crimes in daily life. None of them are up here, you will notice. We really not a very violent society, and we are not a very violent world. And the idea, one of the ideas of needing guns and wanting guns that many people have is because I want a gun to protect myself. And I want to tell you that's fine and that makes sense. And by the way, I grew up with guns, so I'm really comfortable with guns. My brother owns about, I don't know, 20 or 30 or 100 of them. I have no idea how many. Um, here's something that our president tweeted out. Um, once again, I'm saying this as a point of we need to be honest and we need to be clear. And we need to not provoke fear. Because provoking fear actually stokes the fire. And when we stoke the fire, we create divisions between us. So, he's, so here's this organization, which is not an organization, Crime Statistics Bureau. It might have been the Russians that put this together. And, and, so, and there is no, and you should know it's not real because it says San Francisco. There's, I don't think there's a thing. This is a very so-called like really uber conservative, what we'd identify as conservative, anti-leftist, anti-liberal uh, chart here. And I don't think any of those people live in San Francisco anywhere. So 2015, blacks killed by the police, uh, killed by whites. 2% of blacks who died were killed by whites versus 97% killed by other blacks. Whites killed by blacks. 81% of all whites um, who were killed were killed by blacks. Killed by whites, only 16%. Whites killed by police, 3%. Blacks killed by police, 1%. Okay? I don't know what that actually means. I'm not really sure what those mean. Blacks I mean the 1% of the black population is killed by police? I, I have no idea. Okay? So our president tweets this out. I'm going to say immensely irresponsible because it's stoking fear. So here are the actual data, by the way. So blacks killed by whites, 8% of all blacks killed by whites. Blacks killed by other blacks, 90% of black people who were killed with a gun were killed by other black people. Whites, of all white people who were killed by guns, 15% were killed by black people. 82%, look at that, instead of 16%, right? It's like whites are... 
81% of all whites who died by guns are killed by what this thing is saying, we're killed by black people. Meaning that if you see a black person, be afraid. White people, be afraid. They will come after you. When in fact, the number is 15%. And it's just really, really irresponsible for anyone to put these kinds of data up. My guess is Trump, didn't, he probably didn't even read the thing and he just tweets stuff, so it's fine. But immensely irresponsible. Most people who die by guns, die by guns from people around them, not by people they don't know. So the idea of needing guns and wanting guns and protection, well, go back a couple slides. If you're watching a lot of news, then you have the idea that you really need to protect yourself. And this is, we live in a violent world, we live in a violent society. At any moment you could be attacked, you could be killed. So go out and protect yourself at all costs. In fact, the truth is we're not a very violent society. The vast majority of Americans, not true of everybody, but the vast majority of Americans are never going to be touched by violence themselves personally. And so when we create this idea that we are very violent and then go forward, and then we bring race into it and we carve these divisions like, hey, watch out for the violent black people. Essentially, this is a message to white people. Watch out for violent black people. They are, they are the ones who are killing you. It's very much a problem. It works against certainly what we're trying to do in here was to see all the interconnectivity. Okay. You, and by the way, it's rare to be killed by someone who you don't know. Did I say that already? Can I say that again? It is rare to be attacked or killed or some way victimized by somebody, victimized physically, aggressively, violently by somebody you don't know. 